Okay, for those of you who are wondering, again, we had uh, two Republican candidates for position three in the, first, in the primary. Now we have one Republican candidate, and we have Kevin Albert now, who is the Independent Party of Oregon. Independent Party. Well, it is a party. Uh, uh, Kevin Albert is a nominee from the Independent Party. Colleen Roberts won the uh, uh, actually uh, Colleen Roberts won the nominee as a nominee for the uh, Republican and I believe the Democratic Party too. Yes. So, okay. Are you guys ready to field some questions? <laughs> now, just in case you, you practiced up on what I asked the other candidates, I'm going to ask different questions. <laughs> okay, there's been a lot of controversy about the fairgrounds, especially in the last couple of years. Um, what is, what's your assessment? and of, of the situation. What can you do as a commissioner? If there is a problem, what can you do as a commissioner to solve those problems? We'll start with Mr. Talbot. Well, thank you to the uh, Eagle Point Independent and uh, the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this. And gosh, thanks for to all of you coming out. I mean, we must be the best show in town tonight. I mean, I'm impressed by the endurance of the audience. Uh, but. I think you're here because you care about uh, the future of our county, and, and, and so, so, so do we. Um, so one of the things that I've said in my campaign is that uh, I really want to pay attention to those parts of county government that I, I define us for who we are as a community. And the fair and expo are one of those areas that really does that. Uh, it's a showcase for many of the things that happen in our region. It's the place where our young people come with their 4-H projects. It's the place where businesses showcase the products that they have. It's a place where visitors to our valley come to see what we at the Rogue Valley are all about. So the fair and the expo are really important to us. Now the county runs those as an enterprise operation. And by an enterprise operation, I mean that we expect that operation to recover the cost of that operation from the revenues for the people that use it. And that's been the struggle with Fair and Expo, is to try to get it on a self-sufficient basis. And for years, the county had to subsidize it because it couldn't quite make enough money to be self-sufficient. And uh, I just as a little uh, aside here, I want to tell people that for 20 years at Southern Oregon University, I ran cost recovery programs like the expo and the fair, and I do understand how to, how to do that. I see I'm getting low on time. But I think that the county needs to support those operations. It helps to find who, who it is. I think they're almost at a turning point. Maybe with a small investment from the county, it can be self-sustaining going forward, and that'll be good for everyone here. Well, I believe the expo um, has made a turnaround. Um, the the uh, commissioners uh, turned over some debt that they had collected and wrote it off and got them set on their track to get partnerships to help sustain them. But our expo is three parts. It's the fair board, it's the expo, and it's the uh, livestock auction committee. And they all work hand in hand for the children and to make things click and and be successful out there. Everything at that expo, all the buildings, all the showers, all the barns, has been donated. The, the, the county hasn't had to put in any money on, on that. They have to maintain them, but it is such, has been such a generous part of our community that has been that important um, for all the functions out there, for the kids, and for the wonderful um, establishment it is and, and all it has to offer for us. Why it isn't embraced and, um, and just encouraged at every level of our government, I just, by the commissioners, uh, it would sure be by me. I know that the, the county or the fair takes like a certain por portion of the children's um, sale off their animals at the fair. They take, um, I think 6% is withheld from the kids' check. And there is talk of making it 11. I would 11 percent. I would not. Um, I would not I'd do that to the kids. I think you know we should get our tax money from the adults and leave the kids alone. 
but I just think it's a wonderful, my kids were in FAIR, they were in FFA, and it's a wonderful facility that um, I will help in every way I can as your commissioner. Thank you. Uh, Colin, we'll start with you this time. Um, Jackson County, as you well know, at, at once had a very thriving timber industry. Um, that uh, timber revenue supported our schools to a large extent. Uh, and there's still, you know, it appears that there's still a great deal of timber out there that uh, we're now burning rather than cutting. Um, would you favor um, going back to reestablishing that? that um, lumber industry here in the uh, in Jackson County and uh, how would you go about doing it? Of course I would. <laughs> you know, I always say when, when God gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Well, he gave us forests and we can't just sit and let them unmanaged. Um, we've seen weed almost burn up from poor management and we should learn from that. Um, there, There is a, t a wealth of um, economic recovery that can come from our forests, but also for just the, the management that we should be doing as stewards of the land. Um, there is, I've been to Ken Ivory's, um, he runs a class, every once in a while he's here from Utah, and it's called the Land Transfer Act. And he is trying to get the western states, his state in particular, um, the land back to the state instead of in the federal government's hands. And, and Klamath County has passed a proposal to, to ask our state, we want our land back. They've made a motion, their county wants to stand firm, they want their lands back from the federal government. And I would, I would love to do that for Jackson County as well. It just, it's just our voice to the state level as a county. Um, I was privileged to go uh, tour the Douglas Complex fire um, scene, and you can see private land that's been managed and the federal lands that's been managed. It's not managed at all. The private lands are green and beautiful and produ producing and the federal lands are, are uh, just unmanaged. They're timber boxes and they're waiting for some kind of environmental impact statement or protection of environmental species. And I, if we get it back in state hands, we don't have to do that. We can manage them and it's for our health, safety, and our welfare. And I believe a judge just a year ago ordered the uh, ONC Act to be implemented with those federal lands in Oregon. And I think there should be in coordination at that, those meetings and get it done for our citizens and of our land. Kevin? Well, I agree with uh, my opponent on one thing, that our current timber management programs are not working because we see the forest not, not really being used for the benefit of the community. And we have an important forest products infrastructure in Southern Oregon that we want to maintain. We don't want to see that, that go away. But I, I want to remind people that the county commissioners in Jackson County are going to make the decisions that are going to determine the future of forest products and the timber industry and our forests in Southern Oregon. They're going to be made at the federal level. And the role of commissioners is really going to be to advocate for the counties that they represent. And that means collaborating with other counties and with the Association of Counties, and it means lobbying primarily at the federal level. And one thing I'd like to point out is that uh, I, I have experience doing that. I'm, uh, I've been an advocate for education at the state government level and at the federal level in Washington, D.C. I've gone back there and I've done lobbying on the behalf of education, and I'm prepared to do that on the behalf of our local forest products industry if we come up with a plan that has a reasonable chance of passing. And I've been skeptical of this idea of lands being returned to the states or the counties because there is no precedent for that. And it's a sort of a feel-good thing, oh, let's bring the land back. But the truth is that the, it's very difficult for that to happen at the federal level. But if it resolves the logjam that we have, and if it gets timber management out of the courts, then I'm willing to advocate for that, and I can be pretty passionate about that, and I believe I have the skills to do it because I've had experience doing it. So yes, let's figure out a way to, to, to get off the status quo. Let's figure out a way that we can do a reasonable amount of forest uh, products and logging so that so that we can sustain this infrastructure that's so important to who we are in Southern Oregon. Thank you. 
Kevin, um, is public transportation important in Jackson County? And what would you do as a commissioner to promote uh, public transportation? Well, sort of uh, <laughs> an interesting question. You heard Pat Ashley. Pat Ashley is the chair of the Rural Community College Board. I'm the vice chair. And I would be the chair, except that I'm the president of the Oregon Community College Association this year, so Pat stepped in as chair uh, to do that. And our board really grappled with this issue of uh, the RVTD ballot measure. Is it the right thing? Is it the place of a, a, a community college board to advocate for something that has taxing implications to the public? Uh, you know, what is the question? And what you heard Pat said, was that the reason that public transportation was important to the board and the reason that we ultimately decided to support it is it was important to our students. And um, just in a sort of global sense, if I just step back from the issue of transportation for students, if we want to have a healthy economy in Southern Oregon, we have to do it through education and workforce preparation. We are not going to have a healthy economy in Southern Oregon if we somehow don't, aren't responsive to our young people. That's why I've been on the board at Rogue for 11 years or why I worked at SRU for 26 years. I really passionately believe that we've got to help educate people and prepare them for the 21st century workforce. It's not yesterday's workforce. And I, my opponent seems to think maybe we can go back to a, a place where we, we have what we used to have that all of us are nostalgic for, where there was lots of work in the woods and you, you didn't have to have a lot of education to be able to earn a good living for your family. Well, that's probably not going to happen. It's just not realistic. So we've got to look to alternatives and a lot of it is preparing uh, our youth and helping their retraining and education for the people that want to participate in, 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 in today's 21st century workforce. Going. Um, public transportation and infrastructure in our county is important. What can we afford? That's what I will look at. I'll look at the budgets. Um, that's the bottom line. If we can afford it, it is important, and it's important to get the kids into their jobs that need it. And we have a lot of services. We have, have a lot of voluntary services that are available. I was at a breakfast the other day through RV Cog. They provide a wealth of service for the disadvantaged and for the elderly. That is a volunteer uh, basis. And I think we need to look at all of our resources. Government isn't the only answer and it isn't always the most affordable answer as well. And um, I would definitely look at all aspects of budget, what resources are available, what the needs are, match them up and take over as with leadership and common sense. Thank you. Uh, Kennedy's, we're gonna give you a couple of minutes each and we'll start with Ms. Roberts to tell everybody why they should vote for you. Okay, I should have added, you know, being, um, I was accused of going back to the 21st, or another century, we could get horse and buggies, but <laughs> I don't think we could go for that. <laughs> um, my opponent and I bring stark differences to this ticket. Uh, I have the Republican and the Democrat nomination from the primary, and uh, the vote of the people. And I'm really honored to have that. And as I uh, run for this general election, I just, um, I bring uh, years of experience as a business owner. I bring a master's degree in uh, business. And those are transferable between the experience and the education to help facilitate uh, business in our county. I have several concerns as your commissioner. Um, I actually, uh, in addition to experience, I was able to write articles for the Independent for the past almost two and a half years over the business and the concerns and the issues that have been facing our county. And that's been a great challenge. It kept my eye and my interest on the pulse of what's going on and kept the citizens of the Upper Rogue informed as well. And I hope to continue that even as a commissioner. I enjoy Doug Whitsett's articles about what's going on in the state and I think I would love that challenge to keep the information back to the citizens here. I, I want to represent you. Government should be small and the private sector should be growing. I want to um, be your representative. I want, if there's issues, I want you to come and talk to us, whether it's transportation, whether it is education, whether it's the planning department. Uh, I hope you'll come in. I want you to be part of the process and it is a government, in our republic, it's a government where the citizens 
are over the leaders, not the leaders over the citizens. And it's reversed over the years, and we've got to get it back in line. And I would be my honor to help get that into place and um, be a representative. We have tons of issues between keeping things under the Constitution, getting our economic development uh, booming again. We are halfway between Seattle and LA and halfway between Portland and San Francisco on I-5. Why aren't we just the hubbub of commerce? We have everything to work for and um, it would be exciting to see our county grow and prosper with common sense leadership and the citizens empowered, not the government empowered over you. Thanks, Colleen. Kevin? Most of the issues that come to county commissioners are not easy issues. By the time they get to the commissioners, they've probably been argued at a number of different levels, and they're, uh, they're complicated. And they're, uh, you can come at them from a lot of different points of view. And uh, you, you have to have a, a real understanding. You have to be open-minded about what, what you're hearing from different uh, constituencies. Because the people that Colleen keeps referring to are a bunch of different people. There are people that think this, and there are people that think that, and there are people that think something else. And so I think what you want is a commissioner that's open to listening to people, trying to hear and understand their situation, trying to understand the environment in which problems come forward, and to try to make the best decision possible for the county, not based upon a party platform, but based upon what's best for our, our county. Uh, rather than uh, spend the rest of my t time talking about my qualifications, I want, I want to put something to rest. Uh, some people have suggested that I'm sort of out of touch because I live in the southern end of the county. And uh, I want to point out that, you know, among your friends and neighbors just in this audience, I already mentioned Pat Ashley that I, I work on with the RCC board. Uh, you know, I see Carolyn Stieber, who years ago I worked on, on arts projects and education for teachers and trying to bring better services to kids in this community. I see Jonathan Bilden, who is the president of students at SRU that I worked with about trying to help get more funding for higher education here in Southern Oregon. I see Kat Kaiser and Hart Wilson that I worked with on the Southern Oregon Research and Extension Station uh, in the May election to try to get a tax base for us. Something, by the way, that my opponent did not even want the voters to have a choice about. And so, you know, I've been up, oh, and I was on the Upper Rogue Education Center board, for some of you may remember that years ago, trying to bring better services here. And my mom and dad are buried in Eagle Point Cemetery, and I come out here quite frequently. So I have a lot of connections to this community and I kind of don't like it when people suggest I don't know what's happening here, I don't care about this community. I've worked with this community, I've participated in many of the efforts because that's what I've done throughout my life is get involved and try to solve problems. And uh, I'd be honored to be your commissioner and I'd like to help work on the issues that are before us. Thank you.